I'm John Finnegan, I'm Dean of the School of Public Health, and it is my absolute pleasure and privilege to be here today on this SPH Research Day. How many have we done now, Nicole? Six. Six. This is six, and this is a, another record year. You should give yourselves applause for that. So tell us how many do we have? We had 79 students submit abstracts, and almost all of them are actually here and presenting their posters. We want the American health metrics to be good. And why are we looking at retinal findings? Because retinal microvascular findings predict incident stroke and heart disease, morbidity, and mortality. So, I think what needs to happen is a provider level intervention and just saying providers you need to be testing people and not leaving it up to the patients because that's what we see a lot of um, is patients coming in and saying like oh I read about this new recommendation this is my age cohort I should get tested and it's not coming from the providers and that's where it should be coming from. This, this has to be one of our youngest attendants <laughs> at our scientific fair and you know what you can't start them on science too early. <laughs> Mama, say hi. That's a dad over there. He came second in the presentation. Yes, he did. <laughs> what we did was we collected sales data in seven corner stores so that we had five cases and two controls. Uh, so what we do is we use these black baskets, we use shelf signs. Um, this is an example of a sign we actually use in corner stores. It's a Klingon label that would go on the front of the store or in their coolers to highlight and show customers that, hey, we have this great program and we're offering fruits and vegetables right now to highlight it to the community. This poster specifically is examining the trends of the coupons and along with the coupons, uh, they send a lot of free gadgets and gear and this is just an example we have. This was completely free, it's from Black and Mild. Yeah. And it is a wine kit. Oh my goodness. And it just showed up at somebody's house. It's mostly uh, related to alcohol, mm -hmm. barbecue sauce or music, which is very uh, related to smoking, you know, and keep continuing smoking. And they don't want to, they don't want people to quit smoking. They want to keep them continue smoking. <laughs> so one of the big things that this study achieves is it actually kind of sets the foundation for some future work in really understanding the relationship between sexual orientation and weight-related health. So this study just, the aim of this study was to quantify disparities by sexual orientation. Knowing the genetic architecture of a disease, we can, uh, you know, uh, have methods, medical practices, and medicines tailored for individual patients. Because previous studies have um, assessed um, diabetic care using clinical guidelines, but there's been um, limited studies to show patient satisfaction in terms um, with diabetes care. So that was the goal of this study was to understand how patient satisfaction levels are affected by diabetes interventions for diabetes care. Terrific. You're a PhD student and your advisor is who? Dr. Sally Russell. Okay. And you hope to finish your degree in how many more years? Would you say? <laughs> Probably summer 2015. Summer 2015. Okay. Yes. We'll come back at that time. We will. <laughs>